No matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Welcome everybody to our last Wednesday night Lenten service. Uh, we've been doing the wilderness travelogue and got a little mixed up. I thought tonight was on betrayal, but tonight is on fear. So we will be listening to a family talk about fear. So we will begin with our liturgy. We gather together on this Lenten journey to through the wilderness of our emotions, our lives, and your world. Even as we travel through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil, for you are with us. We believe that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor heights nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. We remember that the Beatitudes, that we remember the Beatitudes, that blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others. Our scripture this, morning, this afternoon, this evening, is from Gospel of Matthew. 26, 39 through 46. After going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible that this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said, Peter, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for a second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for a third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And now we will hear from a family talking about fear. Hello, I am Reverend Sherry Nelson. I am the Director of Outdoor Ministry with the Minnesota Conference. And I'm Reverend Kevin Brown, and I serve as the Associate Conference Minister for Faith Formation with the Minnesota Conference UCC. And I am really excited to be here for this first video of our 2022 Lenten Family Toolkit. Um, so thanks, Sherry, for being along for this conversation. This will be kind of a casual conversation uh, as we kind of begin to talk about the themes and explore a little bit about our, um, our overall um, uh, thematic for our 2022 toolkit. We've chosen to talk about Lent uh, as a wilderness journey. Uh, and so the entire series of, of videos and weeks for this Lenten season uh, will be kind of categorized as a wilderness travelogue, uh, where folks will be sharing uh, stories of a variety of ways in which uh, life uh, might seem a bit like a wilderness journey. There is uh, a piece that is seems appropriate for Ash Wednesday, which is the official beginning of Lent, um, that I think helps set the overall theme for us. 
So if it's all right, Sherry, I think I might go ahead and read this piece uh, from David Butler's book, Seasons of Hope, as a way of getting us into the conversation. But wherever the brokenness comes from, it is our story. And every now and then, my God, we want that steadfast love that can heal. We long to be grasped by the power of life itself and renewed and made whole. We need the grace of a God who lets us start fresh and live new. We need a mercy that can touch the pieces of our own souls that have withered and died. We have not the courage or the folly to return to God as we are. And yet God's love draws us and leads us and cajoles us and humors us into trust. That steadfast love is our only hope, but it is hope indeed. In the wilderness of our living, we are loved. Knowing that, maybe even such as we can return to that bosom of grace and that fountain of mercy that is our God. This is the season of Lent. Like his words about the brokenness and that there is still belonging and there. Humors into trust. I like that. Yeah, and I really think that just naming the season of Lent uh, as the wilderness of living, I don't know, at least for me, seems really appropriate at this particular moment. Uh, in my life, in the life of the world and the church, just with everything that everyone has been enduring for so long now. Yeah, I think that there is huge meaning in that journey that Jesus takes into the wilderness. And that, you know, so often we take that as a time that Jesus is tested. But I think it's more about Jesus identifying things around him in his own, in his own self and those, those pieces around us that do fall into some of that brokenness um, into isolation and sorrow and uh, fear. And Jesus is taking that time and that journey of walking in the wilderness with all of that stuff to figure out where the God within him is that can help him through those moments and, and make some better choices than to just let things happen as they are. Yeah, that really resonates for me because, you know, I, I think we often have a, a notion of wilderness as being a place of danger and threat only. Um, or at least that can be one way of, of entering into that, especially that journey that Jesus took. We, we, it, we so focus on the temptation of that in, in our liturgies, in the way we open Lent each year with that. But I think we miss the other side of that, which is wilderness as a place of solitude and discernment, uh, a, a place to, to go to step out of the noise of the world around us. And, and for me, that's one of the the best aspects of the season of Lent uh, is, is that time where we can choose intentionally to remove some of the clutter and noise, even if it's just for a minute, uh, to help us uh, listen better, um, listen better to, to the voices um, that come kind of deep within our soul, to the whisper of the spirit. Um, and to set aside that space for solitude and spaciousness so that we can better discern and maybe lean into the places that the spirit is, is leading us uh, and calling us to engage in, in whatever ways in the life of the world. Um, and so, yes, it is both that place uh, where it feels threatening uh, and, and that is certainly, I think, a lot of experience of life these days is exhaustion and threat and fear uh, and confusion. Um, but I think there are some gifts uh, in some of this wilderness experience, even now, even when we wish it would end, um, that are so important. 
Yeah, I think that there's this piece about <clears throat> Lent that we usually start with with Jesus at the Jordan River, understanding his gift of, of knowing um, that God was is within him <clears throat> way up to his resurrection, that we don't really take a lot of time to think about how often he pauses to pray, to meditate, to really discern all that's been going on around him and that we just focus on how much he is healing and preaching and teaching um, that uh, maybe we're just too quick to want to continually do things and not just take time to say, okay, what's going on within me that I, I need to really take some time with? Well, I think it's interesting because and it's partly the way that our liturgical tradition uh, splits the text. So we have baptism of Jesus that happens early uh, in January, right after Christmas tide, um, and, 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 or right after Epiphany. And then we don't get to the temptation story, to the wilderness story, uh, until the beginning of Lent. Um, and it's easy to forget that those two stories are connected uh, in the text. And it is the the spirit that descends um, and reminds and names Jesus as beloved child of God. And then just a moment later in the narrative, the same spirit is who kind of compels Jesus into the wilderness. Um, those two, that being named beloved uh, and heading into that intentional space uh, again, for solitude, for discernment, for um, uh, for digging in and, and having the spaciousness one needs to see what actually that belovedness means in my own life, those are connected. Um, and, and I think uh, sometimes in our own wilderness experiences, those are precisely the times that we forget, or at least it's harder to remember um, that just like Jesus, each of us um, is called beloved by the God in whose image we're created. Um, and it's precisely in those times uh, that I think we need to hear and be reminded of that the most. Um, and so how is it that we might create the space that makes that possible? So I wonder what the stories of Jesus in the wilderness that those wanderings might have to say to us at this particular time, you know, with with pandemic stuff, with um, some of the political things that are going on, and some of the social stuff that's going on, what does this wandering in the wilderness mean to us today? I guess one of the things is that I think that um, Jesus, you know, entered the wilderness. Um, Partially, you know, my, my reading might be that it was partially in search for clarity and purpose, um, trying to understand more fully uh, what it is that his particular ministry was going to be, what it was that his, his mission, his particular piece of the mission of God in the world was, uh, and that through all of those experiences in the wilderness and we don't really know we only get little glimpses of, of what you know what the writers uh you know wanted to, to tell us about that um um but what we do know is that jesus came from that time a bit on fire uh with a, a clarity of of a vision and mission and purpose and i think that's the other place that right now with with so much um, chaos surrounding us, uh, with, with so much upheaval, uh, with so much stress and anxiety and fear, um, it, it can be hard to, to figure out what our purpose, what my purpose, uh, how is it that my, you know, my meager gifts, true and I can name them, but what, you know, 
what they have to offer at this moment. Um, and so I think um, realizing that uh, that Jesus had his own experience and wandering and maybe that felt aimless and hard and threatening um, somehow in the midst of all of that, uh, uh, he was able to gain a clarity of vision and purpose uh, that I think gives me a little hope. Uh, it also feels a little daunting and overwhelming, uh, but also that provides some hope that this time that feels so much like aimless wandering, uh, like there's so much unknown, uh, that gives me hope that maybe amid the chaos, I can catch glimpses of the possibilities of what is emerging as well, and where I am and where we as a church are called into this. You know, I think that this is an opportunity for us to kind of look back through some of the biblical stories to see where hmm, our humanness is that um, has been the, the big question right from the start of humans being able to start telling stories and thinking about their lives and putting it to paper that Jesus just uh, gives us an opportunity to understand that it all kind of comes together um, that we're not alone in this and that these things will continue to happen. I look at a lot of the things that we are fearful of with, with a, a virus that is really minuscule, that's taken over the world, that um, there is violence in the world that doesn't seem to ever go away or at least shifts a little bit. And that's all part of our humanness. And I think that when we walk in the wilderness with Jesus, we can see that even in the stuff that seems bad, that good comes out of it. That we've seen people that have worked hard to keep other people safe from this virus, that they've masked up, that they've gotten vaccinations when possible, that people have been quick to work on vaccinations. Um, and even with some of the violence that there are people that are that are trying to find um, ways to to stop it and um, to work towards peace. And those are all good things that we can do in little bits at home or go out into the world and and do when we can. Um, you know, even just working on doing stuff for our environment, making sure that we recycle as best we can at home is a is something that we learn in the wilderness of, you know, this is what's happening to our planet. What is the little thing that I could probably do that will make a big difference? Yeah, I think, you know, kind of looking back as you're naming it, it's so much of the so many of the stories in our in our biblical tradition. If we look at our our congregations and people of faith through generations there in our own families, uh, the more we hear and share the stories of of faith and doubt and living, um, I'll say that um, you know that there have been so many times in the past few years where you know as we're going through this that my own fear or my own anxiety um, has, been, um, has been helped uh, by just hearing stories of, of human resilience coming from all kinds of places. Um, uh, you know, stories of, of folks who were able to muster courage amid their fear, uh, who were able to continue moving through enormous grief uh, at, at huge losses of people they love, of home, of place. And I'm just reminded um, by those shared stories uh, from our faith tradition and beyond um, that, that helped me uh, find my own place 
uh, of courage and resilience um, and help kind of um, embolden and encourage and uphold me amid, um, you know, really hard times. Well, our time has come to an end. This has been a good conversation. And I hope that uh, as people watch this, that they will start their own conversations that uh, will help bring out the joy of Lent and Ash Wednesday. So let us pray. In the midst of all that goes on around the world, in our communities, in our families, and even within ourselves, there is a light that shines through that helps us. It helps to, with the brokenness, it helps us with our fears, our anxieties, our feelings of isolation, feelings of loneliness, feelings of everything is just too much. In this wilderness that we walk through that we call life, we uphold that there is joy to be had and hope abounds. So we walk through this Lenten season with open hearts, open minds, and souls that are ready to embrace the light with all of our energy. In this we pray. Amen. Sign of life and death, remind us of our common home. Mark us as a child of soil and breath, renew the world you love. Mark us as your own. You belong to Christ and to So before we leave, 
you know, to say, hey, um, if you want to have some questions to talk about, if you're watching this or think about, um, I wonder when there was a time you were afraid. Of course, we all get afraid. I wonder who or what helped you feel safe. I wonder what God feels when we are afraid. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you. May God lift up his face to you this day and grant you peace. Amen.